Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, here with what I think is an ideal type of a prayer, to pray over your child. Um, and if the father is in the home, uh, preferably the father prays this prayer because whoever the head of the household is, is the one that whose words carry the most weight. There was always something very important about how God used the Father's blessing. And I am going to pray a type of a prayer, a kind of a model that you could follow um, that you might want to pray over your children. Here it goes. Okay. Whether your child is on the straight and narrow or not, this is still good to pray, uh, especially for uh, preventative measures. In the name of Jesus, my child is blessed, not cursed. I cancel every curse that comes against my child through my bloodline or through his mother's bloodline. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every assignment of the enemy on my child in the name of Jesus. I cancel sicknesses in the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave my child. Never touch my child. My child will not have high blood pressure. My child will not have diabetes. My child will not have debilitating diseases of any kind. My child will not have tumors or growths in his body. My child will never get cancer or pneumonia. I rebuke all of that in the name of Jesus. My child will live a long, healthy life. And my child will live a holy life for the Lord. I dedicate my child to God. And Lord, I mean this. If my child is bent on living an unholy life, to the point where he's willing to go to hell for it, that I give you my permission for his soul's sake to take him early before he passes that point of no return while he's still in the boundaries of your mercy to take him to heaven. When I say him, I mean him or her. In the name of Jesus, I pray for supernatural divine protection over my child. Lord, dispatch guardian, warring, ministry angels over them daily, every second of the day, in the name of Jesus. Guard them from demonic attacks while they sleep. I rebuke demonic attacks. You will not attack my child at night, in the name of Jesus. Father, Give my child such protection that there will be no rapes. There will be no molestations. There will be no bullying. Nothing that would harm my child psychologically or emotionally. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you give my child such favor with you and man. That it will always be easy for my child to get a job. That nothing he puts his hand to will be impossible for him to do. That you will give him high skill, high mental capacity, great intellectual capacity, a tremendous amount of understanding and wisdom, and flood his heart daily with love. Give him a compassionate spirit, a spirit of kindness, to be tender towards those that he's stronger than, that he will never oppress those that are maybe in a lower position of, of, of work than he or she. You see what I mean? You have to cover. Lord, let their needs always be met miraculously, naturally, but let them never suffer lack. I mean, you do everything now. Of course, God is sovereign and God works with, oh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, let me get back to Pat's two cents. Now, that is a nice uh, model of prayer for your children. And to tell your child also when you get through praying for them, that not only God loves them, but you want them to always know you love them as well. 
unconditionally. Whether they're on top of their game or at the bottom of their game, you will always love them. You may not be able to stand them from time to time, but your love will always be there for them. Now, what I want you to think about is when you pray this kind of prayer for your child, they're listening to this. You're also planting a seed. And you are speaking something into their spirit. There were a number of things my father, and he was unsaved. He wasn't even praying. Shows the power of a father's words over their child. My father told me I was smart. Well, I didn't end up being as dumb as I thought I was. But my father told me, you would make a great driver. And that's one thing I know I do very well, very comfortably. I'm very defensive, but I'm not fearful. And I'm also aggressive. Confident is the word, I guess. The other thing, he told me, no matter when you go to get a job, you will always be able to get a job. Somehow, you know, if you look at them dead in the face, you shake their hand, you speak with confidence. Patty, everybody on my side of the family has always been able to get a job. We've never had people that suffered from unemployment. You will always be able to get a job. It would be easy for you. And it was. I would go for a job interview and be taken on a, on a tour almost every time. And I get the job until the Lord called me to self-employment, then I did hair for the rest of my life. But the point is that what my father said came true. I became a professional driver. I drove a city bus for five years. And I was very comfortable with that big old 40 foot long bus. Very comfortable. I didn't have any problem with it. So matter of fact, I felt more comfortable in the bus than in the car. I knew how to finagle that bad boy. So my point is, what God, oh, he also told me this. I, I almost forgot this. He said, uh, uh, I can see that you have a mechanical mind. Now, my father had a mechanical mind, but a mechanical mind is also a creative mind. And what I couldn't do, I figure out how to do. And but that wasn't in mechanics. That was in doing extensions on people with alopecia, doing artwork and trying to figure out how to get the water to look like water. And, you know, between my mother and my father, I got to see things that made things easier for me. And then God added his wisdom. And there are things I can see and figure out that my little pea brain on its own would not have done so. So when you have your parents speak things over you, they take root. That's why parents, here's your warning. Don't call your child stupid. Don't tell them they'll never amount to anything. Don't call them retarded. Don't put them down. Don't tell them they're good for nothing. Don't tell them you wish they had never been born. I don't care if you do wish they had never been born. Don't tell them that. The Bible says call things that are not as though they were. You birth things into your children's lives with your mouth. Do you want to birth curses or do you want to birth blessings? Then what you end up with by by birthing curses is a self-fulfilled prophecy of creating your own monster. Be careful. And I'm done on that. Hear me? God bless you.